Hello and welcome to Bristol Sport TV from Ashton Gates Sports Bar. In the next 10 minutes we'll bring you all you need to know about this weekend's sporting action plus an exclusive tour around the West Stand. But first we start with the exciting news that a new sport is joining the group. From October the Bristol Jets will play in the National Badminton League and to tell us a little bit more about it I'm joined by the chairman of the Avon Badminton Association Ian Gorham. Ian, thanks very much for coming in to talk to us. Exciting times for the sport of badminton. Yeah, I think it's really great. I mean, it's going to be the first opportunity people have had to see professional badminton uh, around Bristol. Uh, at the moment, it's, people have to travel a long way to see that. So we think it will be really inspirational for all the young people who play and, and all the people who play around Bristol. Uh, we think it will be great for them. First up, why badminton? There are so many sports out there. What, what, obviously, you are passionate about it, but tell us the reason of why badminton is important for Bristol. Well, it's hugely popular. I mean, there's over 2,000 people registered to play. We know there are a lot of people who play uh, just down the local leisure centre, uh, etc. It's a really good game that, that many people can take part in, uh, you know, however fit they are, however much they're interested in sports. So uh, it's very inclusive, uh, uh, you know, and it's a great game from that perspective. Mm. Well, certainly from Bristol Sports point of view, you know, one of our mantras is, is that it's an inspiring sport. And I guess by putting on elite level sport, which is what this would be, it would be televised on Sky, it's the absolute... Um, professional level of sport, it will inspire youngsters, hopefully, and everyone to take part. Yeah, that's right. I mean, it's televised on Sky, it's televised in Asia on Eurosport, so, um, uh, you know, it's got that, that media coverage, um, but also, you know, people can go and watch and see people play, um, uh, you know, there and there and then and, and watch how they play and learn from them. So we think it's going to be great and really inspirational, particularly for young people who, who are interested in taking up the sport. Well, you talk about uh, badminton is alive and thriving in Bristol, but this will really push it on to the next level. Um, and I guess from a Bristol sport point of view, it, it forms a natural part within our SGS sport there that we've got the Bristol Flyers, we've got the women's football, this will naturally fit into SGS College. That's right, so we'll, we'll be playing at the SGS Wise Arena, uh, the same as the Bristol Flyers basketball, um, you know, and a lot of the setup and the marketing and the excitement that people get from that, you know, we'll be looking to bring uh, exa exactly that to the badminton scenario as well. And it is quite an innovative setup, isn't it, how this National Badminton League is run. Just talk us through the structure of it, because it's all concentrated around game night, which is Monday night. That's right, Monday night is game night, uh, and there are, uh, there have been six teams in the league. The, the, it's being expanded to eight, which is where our new franchise comes in. It's one of the two new, two new franchises. Um, so you know the, there are teams all over the country, uh, quite quite diverse. Um, and bringing something to the southwest was really important to us because uh, at the moment the southwest has been missing out, and uh, it's been very exciting. Uh, it's really taken off well, and, and now to be part of it's going to be great. Now you've got a few months to get ready for the start of that season, but it is going to be a busy few months, isn't it? Because you've got to recruit a whole team. How, how do you go about doing that? Sure, so there's a transfer window actually which opens soon, so uh, we can't talk to players at the moment but um, we're obviously doing a lot of groundwork and preparation for that, so uh, we're going to put together um, a really good team um, and we're hoping to uh, have as part of that as many people we can get who, who you know, have got an affiliation or connection with the South West so that we've, we've got a core of a team, hopefully we've got South West connections. Um, so lots of hard work going into it between now and October but uh, you know, we're on the case. Mm. And just finally, from a personal point of view, you know, badminton isn't one of the real mainstream sports but as you say it's hugely popular particularly throughout Asia um, how did you get into it? What, what inspired you to get, in part with, get involved with badminton? Well, my, my girls play um, and it's been great for them. So as a family, we've had huge enjoyment out. We go out and play uh, at, at a local club. So, um, and then I, I sort of, as you do, got involved in, in the uh, running of it and, and, and helping out. So uh, it's been fantastic to be able to get involved in this and, and work with Bristol Sport um, uh, to put something together and, and have this new franchise, Bristol Jets. It's going to be brilliant. Well, a hugely exciting time. Ian, thanks very much for coming in to talk to us. Thanks, Lisa. To football now and following Saturday's 1-0 defeat at Leeds United, City have bolstered their squad and look forward to hosting Birmingham at Ashton Gate on Saturday, as Adam Baker reports. Just a week after securing the loan signings of Alex Pearce and Ben Gladwin, John Pemberton has delved into the market once more with a double swoop this week. Lee Tomlin has joined the club on loan from Premier League Bournemouth, followed quickly by the return of Academy product Scott Goldborn, ten years after he left to join Reading. Tomlin is looking forward to getting back out on the football field once more after kicking his heels on the sidelines with the Cherries. For me, it's just trying to get back from it. Uh, my performances last season, a uh, few performances this season in the Premiership. Um, and it's just, just go and enjoy my football, really, and uh, hopefully I can um, create goals, score goals. Um, yeah, so, and obviously, 
uh, work hard for the team, be a team player and just keep this club up, that's, that's the main aim. Goldbourne was a City fan growing up and joined the academy at the age of eight. At 17 he was sold to Reading after making just 15 appearances for the club. I didn't feel like I got what I wanted out of um, you know, my Bristol City career, if, if, if you like. So it was always kind of set up for me in my mind. It felt like there was always some unfinished business, you know, which I, I always thought if I did have the chance to come back, I'd, I'd definitely take the opportunity. I was the kid with the, the wallpaper, the Bristol City wallpaper and the, the bedding, the matching curtains and the lamp, you know, it was, it, that's, um, you know, it's been part and parcel of, of my life really growing up, family are, are um, you know, real hardcore Bristol City fans if, if you like. Both players could start when City hosts playoff chasing Birmingham on Saturday at Ashton Gate as Pemberton assesses his options. We train this morning and we'll look at it again tomorrow but you know if I think um, it's the right thing to do and, and they're ready they'll, uh, they'll go in the team. It's not all good news for City however as Luke Ayling has undergone knee surgery and is set for four to six weeks on the sidelines. And just a reminder, there are limited seats available for that game against Birmingham. Just head to the website for tickets. Well, it's been a tough week for the Bristol Flyers as they've fallen to their third straight league defeat away to the Glasgow Rocks, as Joel Osborne reports. The Bristol Flyers suffered their heaviest defeat of the season on Sunday night away to the fifth-placed Glasgow Rocks. The home side made a 15-4 run to start the game and never looked back as the Flyers were already facing an uphill task due to the absence of Tyrone Lee and Doug McLaughlin-Williams. Doug is suffering from a groin injury and uh, Tyrone Lee is uh, suffering from an ankle injury. Uh, we just have to see. We don't know yet uh, if they're going to be fit for Saturday. Uh, we're hoping for the best. In the next 24-48 uh, to 48 hours we'll have a better idea of things. The Flyers are yet to pick up a win in 2016, but injured forward Tyrone Lee says Saturday's game could be the perfect opportunity for the bench players to make an impact. See, man, that's why we got 10 players on our team. You know, we need when one guy when one, one guy goes down, somebody else needs to step up. So that's that's what we need. We need guys to step in. We need our sixth man, seventh man, eighth man, even our ninth man on the bench to step in and be ready to play at, the, at times like this. Tickets for Saturday's game against Leeds Force remain on general sale. As always, head over to bristolflyers.co.uk. Well, City women have been busy with their pre-season training this week and adding new signings to the books in preparation for the new WSL 2 season, which kicks off in March. Today, they've announced the return of Corinne Yorston to the team, who says she's looking forward to adding her international experience to what is a young side. You know, I'm really excited to be back. I had obviously a good, a really good spell here before, and um, and a good year last year with Yeovil. But I don't know. It kind of feels like home coming back. And I've been training with the girls this morning, and there's a really good buzz around the club. And yeah, I'm just excited to to uh, get back training and, and look forward to the season starting. Hopefully, I can add my experiences, uh, both having had a season in WSL two, so I know what it's like. You know, it is different to WSL one. Hopefully, I can bring that to the to the team. It's looking a really good balanced team. You know, Willie's brought in uh, a good blend of of experience and young young talent, and you know, so far it's looking good. And speaking of international women, we must just make mention of Bristol's Lily Owsley, who has just been awarded the Federation of International Hockey's Rising Star of the Year award. The 21-year-old forward picks up the accolade after an incredible 2015, which saw Great Britain win their first European hockey title in 24 years. Lily is now busy preparing for the Rio Olympics later this year. And it's been a packed week up at Bristol Rugby as they've had contract extensions, new arrivals and some departures too, as Tom Vaux reports. Six tries on Friday night versus Ulster was sadly not enough to help Bristol progress to the knockout stages of the BNI Cup. A return to form from Matthew Morgan as well as a debut try from Jamal Ford Robinson put on a sparkling show at Ashton Gate. But with other results not going Bristol's way, they will have to concentrate solely on the championship for the remainder of the season. Due to this, a number of players will be loaned to other clubs in order to give themselves sufficient game time, while a further six players have committed their immediate future to the club. Nick Costa spoke to Bristol Rugby TV of his reasons for signing a new deal. I've been here for you know, two and a half, three years now, and um, my, my wife and I have really settled into the, into the city. And I think all the players that have been here for the last two, three, four years uh, feel a responsibility towards the 
the fans and the club to, to get the club to where it, where it uh, belongs and where it deserves to be. Meanwhile, Academy graduate Marco Mama has announced his departure from the club, joining Worcester full-time from next season. Jersey visit Ashton Gate on Sunday and fans will likely be treated to a run out from newly signed Martin Roberts. And just a reminder, tickets still available for Bristol's clash with Jersey on Sunday. There's only nine games left until those all-important playoffs. And finally, to our weekly look at how the stadium rebuild is progressing, I caught up with Mike Henderson from McLaughlin Harvey, who gave us a bird's-eye view from the top of the West Stand. OK, Mike, we've come up to the very top floor. This is the uppermost seating deck, and it is a spectacular view. Yeah, it's, uh, it's very high up here, so you can see a fantastic view of the pitch and of Bristol right over the whole city, really, from up here. We've now got uh, all the main roof structure in position. Uh, what we'll have is at the front edge of the, uh, of the roof, there'll be a, a polycarbonate zone which will allow light through uh, into the bottom uh, tier, and then the remainder will be uh, solid roof sheathing. So like on the south stand where you've got that sort of clear feel to the outer edge of the roof? Yes, it'll be, it'll, be, it'll be the same proportions as the South Sand, but, uh, but much, much bigger. And the media gantry is on the very top level here as well? Yeah, just right up at the top of the, this terracing, you can see where the new media gantry is going to be going. Uh, they're going to have a fantastic view right down onto the pitch and, uh, and be able to, to cover all the, the future matches. Uh, so that will be a, a, a great position for them. Well, I hope you've enjoyed the programme this week. Don't forget you can follow us on Twitter at Bristol underscore sport or go to the website for all the latest news. In the meantime, have a great weekend of Bristol sport. See you next week.